I'm the design director at Epic Games and I'm currently working on Gears of War 2. Gears of War 2 takes place six months after the events of the first game and uh, winter is coming on fast and the locusts are back and this time around they are able to sink entire cities. Humanity has fled to this location called Jacinto and all of the cities that are next to it are sinking and if the trend continues Jacinto itself will fall. And now what humanity needs to do is essentially strike back against the locust, go underground, into their home world and find them and eradicate them once and for all. So it's a very, very dark story, but it's also very personal because it's also about Dominic Santiago and his search for his wife. He's getting very, very frustrated with his search for her. Delta Squad, of course, is back. We have uh, Marcus, Dom, Cole, and Baird. Uh, Carmine is back. We're not really saying how Carmine is back, but he's everybody's favorite green soldier. Uh, of course, uh, Hoffman and uh, Anya are back, Anya being, of course, your dispatch. Uh, we also have uh, Chairman Prescott, who's the main leader behind the Coalition of Ordered Governments. And uh, we also have uh, Dizzy, who's uh, the driver of the truck, cowboy hat and all. He's got a lot of character. And then Ty Kaliso, who is essentially kind of a Pacific Islander type spiritual warrior, who uh, is incredibly tough. And uh, he's uh, a very deep, uh, kind of uh, interesting and unique soldier. So today we're uh, having a big hands-on session with the press, and they're able to play a lot of the competitive multiplayer. So they're playing Wingman, which is uh, essentially five teams of two players. Uh, it's almost kind of like a free-for-all in the Gears universe meets cooperative, uh, also with the Last Man Standing twist. We also have Submission, which was formerly codenamed Meat Flag, in which uh, players have to take a stranded, knock them down, and uh, take them to a predetermined location on the map in order to win. And then we have Guardian, which is uh, essentially Assassination 2.0 in which each team has a leader, and that leader basically provides respawns for the team that he defends, and once the leader's gone, no more reinforcements. Those are the modes we're showing off, and uh, the journalists really seem to be enjoying curb stomping and uh, taking each other out. So the first uh, and most important uh, tweak that we've implemented in the multiplayer is this idea of stopping power, whereas players get shot with bullets and they will physically slow down now. And this is going to greatly reduce the amount of players doing the magical shotgun roll and jib enemies online that has become ever so popular in the first few years. That really wasn't the game that we intended to build, and uh, we want players to be supporting each other, flanking, providing suppressing fire, and things like that. We found that um, when we implemented stopping power, that players sometimes had these standoffs that weren't being broken, and uh, we decided to implement the idea of a concussive force with smoke grenades that doesn't hurt players, but it does knock them uh, essentially kind of flying around like a rag doll, kind of like bowling pins being knocked over. And uh, you can stick those onto the wall, you can toss it in blind fire, and uh, once those land, players will scatter everywhere, and it's a great way of uh, stirring up the pot, so to speak. Uh, we've also uh, implemented an ink grenade, which is essentially a poison grenade that players can use as kind of an area of denial to flush enemies out of any sort of area that they might be camping in. We have piles of new weapons, and we've tweaked the heck out of the cover system. The first gears, the game was about 85% where it needed to be as far as the responsiveness of cover, and we were going to be as close to 100% gears to as possible and uh, really make what I believe is the definitive combat cover system for the industry. A certain amount of the features that are implemented in Gears 2 were basically some ideas that weren't able to make it in the first game. For instance, uh, crawling when players are down but not out. We didn't have the time and the animation support. And now seeing somebody crawl away from you where they're trying to match the A button, get away, and then grabbing them and taking them as hostage is always tremendously fun. If you get close to them, you have uh, several options. Basically, every single colored button on the 360 controller does something. The A button will essentially take that enemy as cover and take them as a human shield. The X button will do a curb stomp, and this time around you flip them over and actually step on their face, which is very gruesome. Uh, the B button will do a quick custom animation, which is a big melee bomb to finish them off. And the Y button does kind of the uh, coup de gras, the extended finishing move, usually involving slinging a sniper rifle like a sledgehammer, or using the torque bow blades to pop somebody's head off, or something else equally gruesome. The hammer burst was a very useful weapon in the first gears, but uh, you know we always felt like we could tweak it and make it a little bit better. So we redesigned the gun model, made it a fully automatic but slightly slower firing weapon than the Lancer, added in a bit of a zoom ability, as well as the players have the ability to fan the fire button to fire the shots as fast as they can, add the trade-off the fact that the gun will kick like crazy. We've also added in the uh, Gorgon, which is a semi-automatic pistol, which uh, when you take somebody hostage and have that weapon can be a very, very deadly one-two punch of an offense and a defense. And then we've also added the Scorcher, which is the gear's uh, flamethrower. And if you get a perfect active reload with this weapon, your uh, flame will actually
usually go about 25% further. And uh, we have a couple other tricks up our sleeve. For example, you can uh, do an active reload with the Centaur tank, which will cause your uh, explosive tank shells to fire out faster, which really lays waste to a lot of locust crowds. When we uh, were basically planning and implementing the Gears multiplayer maps, we always wanted to kind of build everything around a hook. And it's either a unique location, or it's a kind of level gimmick, or a, an environmental hazard. So uh, in River, the idea is basically that this is uh, almost a two-fourths setup with uh, a beautiful mountain hamlet. Whereas uh, Gridlock, of course, is the classic Gridlock now with cars that explode, by the way. And uh, security is based around the hook that there are security fences that will jib players if they attempt to walk through them. We also have a very, very cool and easy-to-use party system that allows players to essentially buddy up in a group and then find another group to fight against and uh, essentially stay online together before the match, during the match, and after the match. We also uh, have a screenshot mode that players can take pictures and upload it to a separate web server to check out images of their game, as well as uh, achievement tracking. We have a war journal that you know, tracks the player's screenshots and his achievement progress and his collectibles he finds in the campaign. And basically just adding in a, a ton of extended uh, multiplayer functionality so the players can be playing the game for weeks and months to come after it ships. Gears of War 2 will be coming out this November uh, exclusively on Xbox 360 and uh, we'll see the gamers checking it out.